opening and appreciate him for this privilege that we have to be in his presence at this prophetic feast this morning will you give him all the glory give him all the praise give him all the adoration blessed be your holy name ask him to speak to you right now this morning speak to me today by your word i've come here for an encounter with you speak to me today by your word blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed our father will thank you today for the blessing of being in your presence we thank you lord for we know that you have brought us today for an encounter with you by your word let each one of us be changed let our lives be transformed and let your name be glorified accept our thanksgiving in jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen give jesus a big hand of praise and please be seated in his presence this morning i want to begin by appreciating god for this privilege given to me to stand upon this altar and i want to appreciate also my father both in the flesh and in the spirit for hallelujah for laying for us an example the bible says that david told solomon no doubt the god of your father and I believe that the greatest heritage that I and my siblings have been given is to be taught to know God. And that has been taught to us not only by instruction, but also by observation. Therefore, I say thank you, sir. Give Jesus a big hand. We are going to be going into God's word this morning. And I believe, God, that the Holy Spirit will grant us light and understanding. The subject we are examining in this session today is serving God a covenant requirement for maximizing the blessedness of the promised land. Serving God a covenant requirement for maximizing the blessedness of the promised land. For somebody here, the blessings of the promised land shall be manifested in your life we have been made to understand the reality of the fact that god is a god of times and seasons ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to everything there is a time and a season for every purpose under heaven and with god the number 40 years represents the entrance of his people into their land of promise and we have been told that all that we have experienced before now can be likened to the wilderness and what we are about to begin experiencing is what will be our promised land if the wilderness has been this glorious then watch out for what the promised land will be because somebody here will become a wonder for all to behold somebody believe you say louder amen I said somebody believe you say louder amen. amen however we have made, been made to understand that the promised land is governed by laws and it is the laws of the land that determines our residency in the land the bible tells us in deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18 it tells us there deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18 it said therefore you will lay up these words in your heart and in your soul if you are going to be in this land you must look at what he has commanded verse 22 of the same scripture the bible tells us there it says that if you shall diligently keep all these commandments that is the day that you'll be able to have your residency settled in the promised land the question therefore is what are the commandments that must be kept for your residency to be secure in the land of promise in deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 12 the bible tells us this and look at this very closely it tells us it says and the land which the lord thy god cares for 
the eyes of the lord are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end look at verse 13 it tells us there it says verse 13 and it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to the commandments which i commanded this day what are the commandments to love the lord your god and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul to love the lord your god and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul if you are going to be resident in the land these two commandments are principal in determining our stay you and i both know that in every nation nations have laws that determine whether you can be resident there or not and when the law is violated your residency is revoked in the same vein the promised land has laws that must be kept and two of the principal laws are pointed to us in that scripture he said these are the commandments to love the lord your god and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul i pray this morning that for each one of us the grace to love god fervently and to serve him passionately will come afresh upon each one of us amen. you believe it say louder amen. amen i say you believe it say louder amen. amen therefore serving god is a principal requirement for anyone to experience the blessings of the promised land it is a principal requirement exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and 26 the bible says you shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless your brain and your water i will take sickness away from the midst of thee he said there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren where in the land so if you are going to enjoy the blessings in the land you must be committed to engaging in serving god in the land the bible says in the book of isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 if you be willing and obedient what will happen to you you will eat the good of the land so obedience to the commandment of stewardship is what allows you to position for the consumption of the good of the land i like you to understand that when god tells us about the promised land it is a good land it is a land filled with goodies for his people but the condition upon which you and i can partake of the goodies provided is for you and i to line up with the commandment of serving him in the book of job chapter 36 and verse 11 the bible tells us if they obey and serve him he said they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure loving god serving god vital commandments to enjoy the blessings of the promised land i pray again for each one of us that by the encounter that you are having upon this mountain the grace to love god fervently and to serve god passionately will come afresh upon each one of us amen. you believe it say louder amen. amen i say you believe it say louder amen. amen you believe it say the loudest amen, amen. but scripturally you cannot love god and not love what he loves you can't claim to love god and not love what he loves john chapter 21 verse 15 down to verse 17 the bible tells us there very clearly jesus speaking to peter he says simon simon he said lovest thou me more than these and he said lord you know that i love thee and what was jesus's response feed my lambs the second time the question was asked again and peter said lord you know that i love you and he said feed my sheep and the third time the question was asked today and the bible says that peter said lord you know all things and you know that i love you jesus said it is not in explanation it's in demonstration feed my sheep i love god is not an exclamation loving god is in demonstration and you cannot claim to love him without loving what he loves 
every true lover of God will love what God loves. And what does God love the most? The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it said uh, that this is Jesus speaking. He said that this is the purpose for which Jesus came into the earth. He said God so loved that he gave. Not that God loved, but God so loved. The word so is a qualifier. It means that it is not just something that he is interested in. It is something that is his priority. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what God loves the, the most is he loves the lost. And if anyone is a true lover of God, their heart will go after the lost. In other words, the demonstration of the authenticity of your love for God is your fervency in pursuit of the lost. The demonstration of the authenticity of your love for God is your fervency in the pursuit of the lost. We find it all through the scriptures. Everywhere you see a man that is on fire for God, you find a man that is in pursuit of the lost. Paul the apostle, one of the passionate apostles of Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, he said there, Paul the apostle said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Anytime you find a genuine lover of God is a is an excited advertiser of Christ. An excited advertiser of Christ. He introduces Christ everywhere he goes. Christ is his identity. Christ is his expression. From today I see that grace coming upon each one of us in the name of Jesus. You believe me? Say louder, amen. I said, I see that grace to be an advertiser of the kingdom coming afresh upon each one of us. Amen. You believe me? Say louder, amen. amen. So if you are going to be a dweller in the good land, in the promised land, then you must be committed to advertising Christ. You know, this is what the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 10. It said, the land that I'm bringing you into it's not the land of it's not like the land of egypt that you came from he said where you sowed your seed and watered it with your foot as in the, as a garden of herbs you were doing it on your foot so it means that this land has something that is required for your feet if you walk in it what is it that is required for your feet Ephesians 6 and verse 15. The Bible says, And your feet must be prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You must be a, pro a, a propagator of the gospel for you to walk comfortably in the good land. You must be a propagator of the gospel. It is those who advertise Christ everywhere that enjoy the promised land everywhere. I don't know where you may be. But I know that as you become an advertiser of Christ, I see your life becoming a, an expression of the promised land in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. Furthermore, it's important that we understand that according to scriptures, soul winning is every believer's responsibility. It is not for the selected few. Every child of God is ordained a soul winner. In the book of John chapter 15 and verse 16, Jesus speaking said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. I have ordained you. So every child of God is an ordained soul winner. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning from verse 17, the Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. He said, and ye are of God. He said, and whoso, and whoso, and all things are of God. And who, 
who had reconciled himself unto, through Jesus Christ through the, and given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And look at verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry and has given us the word of reconciliation. Somebody say, I don't know how to be a soul winner. I don't know what to say. That's not true. The word of God says he has given you the word. There is something in your mouth that can be utilized as an instrument of harvest. He has given unto us the word of reconciliation. So you don't need to be an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist to be a soul winner. Every child of God is ordained by God as a soul winner. Shout hallelujah. The moment you are a new creature, you are ordained by God to be a soul winner. You recall the incident in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 29 and verse 39. We are told there about the Samaritan woman. One encounter with Christ. One encounter with Christ. And she left her jar and ran into the city and began to tell everybody come see a man which told me all things that i ever did is not this the christ and the bible says in verse 39 and many of the samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman one woman whose encounter with christ was just moments old through her many of the samaritans in the city were turned unto the lord today that same grace is coming upon each one of us Amen. wherever you go multitudes will be turned unto the lord Amen. you believe you say louder amen. amen i said wherever you go multitudes will be turned unto the lord amen. you believe you say loud amen. amen wherever you go multitudes will be turned unto the lord amen. so soul winning is every believer's responsibility your vocation notwithstanding your assignment what notwithstanding your engagement notwithstanding soul winning is the responsibility of every believer now what are the blessings that accompany soul winning we look at a few of them quickly this morning and i believe that the holy spirit will grant us understanding in the name of jesus number one soul winning keeps us going in the faith soul winning keeps us going in the faith our stability in the faith is determined by our productivity in the faith the more fruitful you are the more stable you are the bible makes us to understand in the book of acts chapter 26 and verse 22 this is paul the apostle speaking and he said here, having therefore obtained help from above, I continue to this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses did say should come. I have received the help from above as a witness for Christ. And as a result of that, I continue to this day. So our continuity and stability in the faith is accelerated by our commitment to soul winning it's accelerated by our commitment to soul winning in the book of john chapter 15 jesus speaking verse 1 and verse 2 he said i'm the vine and my father is the husband man and look at verse 2 it says that every branch in me that beareth not fruit he said he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purged it that it may bring forth much more fruit. So for you and I, if we are going to remain stable in the faith, growing in the faith, we must be committed to being fruitful in the kingdom. Our fruitfulness determines our usefulness. And our usefulness determines our stability. My prayer for each one of us is that from this day onward, none of us will ever miss out on being fruitful again in the name of jesus amen. you believe you say louder amen. amen in luke chapter 13 verse 6 down to verse 9 the bible tells us this parable of jesus 
he says he speak a parable saying a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none he says therefore he said to the keeper or the dresser cut it down why come the ground i've come here these three years i've not seen any fruit here cut it down and the dresser said leave it for one more year let me dunk it and let us see if it produces if it produces well if not then cut it down in other words god's expectation is that each one of us are productive and fruitful in the faith and that is what determines our ability to be stable my prayer for each one of us is that from this day onward the grace to remain fruitful in the kingdom comes afresh upon you in the name of jesus i said that grace comes afresh upon you in the name of jesus that grace comes afresh upon you in the name of jesus that grace comes afresh upon you in the name of jesus for stability you notice that when you are an advertiser of christ you are careful with your lifestyle you are careful with your lifestyle your lifestyle is carefully protected from anything that is contrary to the testimony of christ that's why you discover that anytime you see anybody who goes wild for christ they can't live wild in life they live careful lives a man representing christ will naturally live a life that represents christ when you go around announcing christ you cannot live a life contrary to christ check it when you see a man who is living wildly outside is a man who is not advertising christ every true christ advertiser will naturally live a life worthy of christ my prayer for each one of us today is that the grace to become fervent in advertising christ will come afresh upon each one of us amen. somebody believe you say loud amen. amen i said somebody believe you say loud amen. amen somebody believe you say loud amen. amen a number of years ago went out so winning and came across this new convert the man was a major drunkard everybody knew him according to his testimony he said once it gets to 6 7 p.m he's staggering on the street he was known everywhere but then gave his life to christ and after surrendering to christ went wild soul winning before we knew it in the same community they were calling him pastor pastor now the place where they are calling him pastor he can't go to be a palo there so alcoholism terminated why because he was a christ advertiser so his lifestyle had to amend to align with christ if your christianity is secret if your christianity is secret where nobody can see you advertising christ then your life will never be worthy of him please hear this and hear it very well it takes an open commitment to advertising the kingdom to be stable in the faith you know the bible tells us that they looked at the early apostles and they said to them speak no more in the name of christ and this is what the bible tells us in the book of acts chapter 4 verse 20 they said we cannot but speak of the things that we have heard and we have seen they could not be threatened into silence as a result of that they became christ-like men the bible said that they called them christians first in antioch why they were christ-like their character became noticeable their testimony became open from today i see that becoming your own experience <laughs> somebody believe you say louder amen. amen i said from today i see that becoming your own experience amen. you believe you say louder amen. amen number two soul winning secures us partnership with god which results in supernatural breakthroughs it secures us partnership with God which results in supernatural breakthroughs partnership with God resulting in supernatural breakthroughs the Bible makes us understand in the book of Matthew chapter 20 28 verse 19 all the way down to verse 20 Jesus speaking 
he said go into all the world and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and the holy ghost and he said in verse 19 verse 20 teaching them to observe all things that i command you and lo as you are doing that i am with you always even to the end of the world any man that is on the go for christ is on the go with god anywhere you find him you find god with him and what happens when god is by your side is that every gate lifts up their head psalm chapter 24 verse 7 to 10 it said lift up your head all your gates and be ye lift up your everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your head O you gaze and be lift up your everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory now hear this and hear it very well there are doors that may not open for you alone but no door can stay closed with you and god there are doors that may not open for you alone but there is no door that will stay closed for you and god when god is by your side there is no opposition that can stand before you psalm 114 verse 1 to 7 the bible says when israel came out of egypt he said israel was his dominion and judah was his sanctuary he said the sea saw it and fled jordan was driven back the mountains began to skip like rams the hills like little lambs what he let the old sea that thou fledest and jordan that thou was driven back and mountains skipping like rams and hills like little lambs trembled down O earth at the presence of the lord at the presence of the god of jacob you can't carry the god by you and suffer closed doors in life you can't carry god by you and suffer closed doors in life when you appear the doors open because of the one that is standing with you when you appear the gates open because of the one that is standing with you have you not heard isaiah chapter 45 verse 1 to 1 to 1 to 3 how we said there he said unto cyrus the one whose hand i have holding he said to uh, to open the two leaf gates and the gate shall not be shut i will i will i will make the crooked places straight i will cut in pieces the gate of brass i will cut in sunder the bars of iron and i will give you the treasures of darkness the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know you can't carry god and he not show because the doors must open on your behalf as the grace for soul winning comes afresh upon you every closed door shall open on your behalf somebody believe it say louder amen every closed door shall open on your behalf you believe it say loud amen. amen we had one of us standing on this altar yesterday sharing her testimony and she said how that she came to this commission as a little as a little one and 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 broke without any any kind of direction nothing to look forward to but as she settled down she began to engage with the word of god as she did that miracle job landed as she did that husband arrived as she did that miracle child arrived because no door can stay closed when god is by your side from today i see grace coming upon you to sustain divine partnership by soul winning you believe it say louder amen. amen number three number three soul winning souls joy to heaven which returns heavenly joy to the soul winner on the earth the bible says in the book of luke 15 and verse 7 he said there is joy for one sinner that turns to repentance there is joy there is joy so heaven rejoices over the repentance of one soul and the law of the kingdom is whatsoever you sow you reap if you sow joy to heaven you must reap heavenly joy on the earth now the question is what happens when this joy comes what happens what is the effect of this joy number one is you enjoy supernatural strength you are enjoying strength vitality supernatural strength Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 the joy of the lord is your strength 
I pray today that every hold of weakness be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, you enjoy supernatural health. Proverbs 17, 22, it said, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. So where there has been sickness, health is exchanged with it. It is turned to health when a man or woman at, enjoys this heavenly joy. I see every hold of sickness, every hold of disease being cleared of the way in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three, you enjoy access to revelation. Access to revelation. He said, with joy will you draw waters out of the well of salvation. That means you can never be cornered again because you always know what to do. When the joy of heaven is in you, you will always gain access to light. And when you gain access to light, you cannot but take flight. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He says in verse 8, Who are these that fly? So with light you cannot remain on the ground. You will take flight. When the joy of heaven is multiplied into you, there is a steering of your wings to take flight. For somebody here, I see you taking flight in the name of Jesus. As this grace comes upon you, you will no longer be found on the ground. But you shall take flight supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. So so winning, so joy into heaven. And that joy manifests practically on the earth. What else does so winning offer? So winning brings about supernatural wisdom which causes the star in us to rise. Supernatural wisdom supernatural wisdom proverbs eleven thirty: he that winneth souls is wise daniel chapter 12 verse 2 what does he say to us there he said those that are wise shall shine as the firmament and they would those that turn many to salvation as the stars of heaven forever and ever so soul winners end up as stars on the earth shout hallelujah i say shout hallelujah they end up as stars on the earth. Can I remind us of the testimony of God's servant, our father? He said at the age of 19, he went to a village on a teaching relief job. And when he arrived there, he asked the question, is there any church here? They said, there's no church. And he said, Lord, may I not leave this village the way I met it? And went out strategic evangelism. Not talking to them and trying to discuss with them, but going to preach to them in prayer. And they were converting to Christ. And by the time he was departing, a church had been built there within that period of 72 days. By the time they were de he was departing, they gave to him a prophetic lantern. And they said to him, We have heard that wherever the church goes, civilization goes. The light that you have brought to our village, let it shine around the world. Is that light that we are celebrating today? It came where? At the place of soul winning. You may be in a corner somewhere, but your star is about to rise. I don't know if you have ever noticed, if you see where the sun is rising from, you will discover that it comes from a place of obscurity. You can't see anything. It's in the corner. Outside of observation, but suddenly it begins to rise. There are those who may be in a corner, nobody is seeing you, but suddenly you begin to rise. And when the sun rises, there is no eye that can claim not to see it. As your star rises, no eye will be able to claim ignorance of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you lift your hand to heaven right now? Lord, I receive grace. This soul winner's grace. Let it come afresh upon my life. I receive grace. This soul winner's grace. Let it come afresh upon my life. I receive grace. This soul winner's grace. Let it come afresh upon my life. Thank you, mighty God. Why not rise on your feet right now and give glory to God for the grace coming upon you to be a soul winner, passionately, fervently. Lord, I receive that grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's praise him. The choir will lead us as we celebrate God together. God.